The question was, could you and should you put locking keys on an acoustic guitar? And I believe the main reason a lot of acoustic companies don't put locking keys on guitars is because it's believed that locking keys are a tuning stability issue and that's really attached to tremolo systems or guitars that get knocked out of tuning and acoustics don't really don't have that problem so therefore they don't need them and it also brings up an interesting question which is tuning stability something i see a lot on videos over and over again is people referencing locking keys as tuning stability and i i don't really agree with that and here's why what I mean this is a Taylor 214 it's a very nice acoustic it's my favorite guitar and it has really nice tuning keys on it so there's nothing about these tuning keys that are slipping or there's any issues the locking keys that I'm going to use today to replace these keys in my opinion are not better in the quality of the gear ratios or in the way that they feel they just have locking systems on them a locking key is essentially designed so that you can run the string through and either do zero wraps or maybe one wrap around and restring the guitar much faster and also not worry about maybe some of the string slippage if you don't know how to tie a string or wrap a string correctly. So what can we do to improve this tailor and sharpen it a little bit? Well, we're going to add locking keys today and we'll get into that in detail. It's something you don't see normally on acoustic guitars, but my favorite guitar player, which is Monty Montgomery, his model comes comes with locking keys on his guitar. We're also going to do something with the pins and that's mostly just to illustrate your options to show you how you could take a nice acoustic and make it better. And you can imagine if we can improve this nice acoustic then a less expensive acoustic will also benefit from it probably even more so. To upgrade the tuning keys on this Taylor guitar there's a couple options. Of course you've seen on this channel we use the ratio locking keys. I'm a real big fan of these and more importantly with their adaptive plates you can install these in seconds. You could also use Hipshot, another brand you've seen me use on this channel. And again, it has the unplate, more adaptive. Uh, I probably prefer the ratios, especially in this circumstance, over the hip shots. But either way, very good tuners. I can't say enough good things. However, today we're not going to use the, either one of these. What we're going to use today is a used set of Spurzel tuners that I was able to buy at a really good price. And uh, so I want to use them. So these were six in line Spurzel keys and I needed three on a side. There's a reason why I've been using Spurzels for years. Not only do I like the quality of them and I like how light they are. In fact, these are gonna be lighter than the, than the actual tuning keys that are on this tailor that don't have locking mechanisms. In this particular case, I need three on three. All you do, which is ingenious by the way, is just take out this one screw Okay, and you'll have four components. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and just take this out, come out at the other side, and then reassemble on the other side. And I don't even know how many seconds that is. I didn't clock it. And now we are three on three. If you wanted later to put the original tuners back and maybe use these on a six in line guitar, you could because you'll be able to adjust them each time. So let's go ahead and take the strings off this guitar and go through the process of upgrading the tuning keys. So the installation process on this is going to be very easy. First, we're going to take off the old tuning keys. And everything I use in this video, I will put a link down at the bottom uh, in the description. The uh, original tuning keys, the ones that come with the Taylor, are definitely heavier. I could weigh them, but I mean, it's obvious they're heavier. And you're going to notice if I go to install these tuning keys, the hole does not line up with the original hole. What's great is this cool little tool right here. It not only works on Spurzel, but also on Fender and other tuners as well. I've worked on all kinds of ways to do this over the years, and this is my absolute favorite way to use this method when putting this in. Not only can you use this as a guideline to center things up, but today what we're going to do is I'm going to, since I know, since I know the new hole with the spurs L is going to be there, the old hole was there where the Taylor tuning key was, I'm going to go ahead and run this Allen wrench right through the old hole. 
push it right in there and that is definitely going to help me center this thing up. Okay. And then what we want to do next is we want to make sure how deep this goes. So we want to make sure we're setting our depth. Go ahead and insert this back in the screw hole and wrap it with a piece of painter's tape. That'll let us know how deep that should be. Right? Okay. There you go. Okay. And what we'll notice is our holes are lined up. And now we'll go to the next one. the strings for a couple reasons one because I can with the locking tuners I don't have to worry about having those extra wraps that'll let me pull it through but mostly because I'm gonna be changing the pins in a second and I already recorded the audio with the original components so it's I want to use the same exact strings when doing the auto comparisons I thought since we're changing up the tuning keys what could we do to improve this guitar so I wanted to try the D Andrea uh, tone pins. These are solid brass pins. These are the more boring of the three kinds. They have some prettier versions, but I went with the least expensive just because I was going for a tone test. I'm going to put them in and we'll do an A-B comparison. So if we can hear if that adds anything to the guitar's tone. So let's see how the tone pins sound. Well, as you can see, I think the tuning keys were definitely a big improvement. Obviously, being able to restrain quickly, uh, aesthetically, they didn't change anything, and tonally, they didn't change anything. However, the tone pins were not my cup of tea. The good news is, if you're wondering if the pins can change the sound of a guitar, this was pretty obvious. These did give it more punch. There was definitely an interesting change in the tone. Uh, what I noticed was it was tighter, more focused, brighter, but... It lost some of the boom or the roundness of the sound and it didn't add sustain. It felt like it took it away. That was the reason I was playing so fast with the brass pens. Uh, it just didn't have the sustain and the warmth and the fullness. So I just couldn't help myself but play faster. But I could see where you would want to add these to a guitar. In this case, I didn't want to add it to this guitar. So I took them back out. 
What I decided was to leave the tuning keys. It's a big improvement on the guitar, and I'm going to pass on the tone pens for now. But I'd like to know your feedback. Let me know what you thought. Did you think they sounded better or worse? How do you think it kind of overall affected the guitar? That being said, I appreciate you guys as always hanging out with me and checking out some stuff with me. Until the next time, know your gear. <laughs>